Everyone is always talking about detox, 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 without actually understanding the body's primary method of detox, which is through the liver. And our livers are constantly absorbing and excreting nutrients or toxins. Some people refer to the liver as a filter. Now, filters, whether it's an HVAC filter, air purifier, water filtration system, get dirty and clogged up just like your liver can. Problem is, you can't exactly replace your liver like it's some cheap plastic filter, if only it was. And this video is long overdue considering that I talk about liver detox in basically every single video every day of the week. But now you guys are gonna have an understanding and reference to why I'm doing certain things. In extreme scenarios and diets, specifically carnivore, keto, vegan, where there's an excess of nutrients, you know, whether you're eating a lot of organ meats or shellfish or on the vegan diet, a lot of high carotene and flavonoid foods, the liver ends up in a state of constant absorption where excretion of toxins and excess nutrients is not happening. Liver is just focused on absorb, absorb, absorb. Even on a standard American diet, a person's liver, I mean, maybe not the healthiest, but at least it's in some state of balance and most people don't have severe levels of liver damage that I've seen on people following these extreme diets. So it's pretty safe to bet that a carnivore dieter is gonna have much better cellular health than a standard American dieter. However, their liver could be compromised because as most of you know, a poor average diet is overwhelmed with seed oils and so many negative things. So at the end of the day, it's still gonna take you years of following a proper diet and routine to start feeling 100% better. Therefore, it is critical to understand that in order for the liver to detox efficiently, you need to remove virtually all toxins, and the part people miss is the excess nutrients in the diet. If you're following carnivore, raw primal diet, even keto, those diets are so high in fat-soluble vitamins, and the fat content of the diet promotes absorption even more. So say you're only eating grass-fed meat, you know, the liver is still going to be overloaded, whether it's the vitamins or the minerals in the meat and fat. What's really bad is if you do those types of diets and you end up having a lot of shellfish, canned sardines, low-quality pork and chicken, because then in some cases you're getting large amounts of vitamins and toxins and pollutants and heavy metals. Now, if you're on a standard American diet, or even if you're just not eating organic, you're going to be overloaded with agrochemicals, vegetable seed oils, all these negatives that the liver and cells are trying to detox and remove. When you have those toxins in the diet, especially in the presence of high vitamin intake, it becomes impossible for the liver to detox. Either way, you end up in a bad spot. If there's an excess of vitamins or toxins, the liver will be under stress and potentially on a minimum of several years to recover from. People that live long and healthy lives were fortunate to be on diets that were not overloaded with either of these. Yeah, maybe they're not 100% healthy and ideal, but you know, it's better to be slightly deficient in certain nutrients and minerals than to be near liver failure from following an extreme diet. Okay, yeah, that's great. You have all the vitamins and minerals, but now your liver is clogged up and has too much crap in it. And we could talk all day about, you know, going from standard American diet to carnivore, keto, the pros and cons and that type of stuff, but it's not really important because those are not solutions in any circumstance. Uh, moving on to mechanisms of detox. Main one is the bile excretion during digestion. And I mean, you know, there's bile for the most part coming out of your liver in small amounts throughout the entire day. Although fat is the primary stimulant of biliary fluid bile release, that bile is entering back into your digestive system in the upper small intestine and it can just be reabsorbed. Keep that in mind. The liver is primarily detoxing through bile release, but that happens at the beginning of digestion. So you really need fiber, starch, carbohydrates to soak these toxins. And there's a lot of studies showing fiber increasing 
antioxidants and detox enzymes in your liver? That's actually because the fiber is soaking the toxins. And if those toxins were to be reabsorbed, they would inhibit your antioxidant pathways and your liver function. So it's like um, a double problem. I don't know what you refer to as, but it's like a, yeah, I guess that's the simplest way to put it. You know, just by having something to soak up that toxic bile, the liver is able to kind of relax and just enter a state of excretion because if it is reabsorbing stuff that it doesn't want, it's going to start flushing it to all parts of your bloodstream, other organs, the brain, depending on how overloaded it is, and you will not feel good. You know, think about trying to soak up some bile or even any liquid with a piece of steak or a piece of fat. You know, these foods are not soluble. They are very solid. Whereas a piece of bread, some pasta, rice, starches, they can absorb much more fluids and hold on to them. These carbs and even sugars can also be eaten by candida. And the candida fungus will actually act as a detox vehicle, like a gateway, by holding on to the toxic bile excrements as it travels through the digestive system. So it's very important to make sure as little of that toxic bile gets reabsorbed as possible. Therefore, you want to stimulate just enough bile release to constantly detox at a safe rate and then have those starches soak the toxins. That's the core of your diet. And if you've replenished B vitamins, if your gut microbiome is healthy, chances are you don't actually need to have any fat in the meal. The liver is going to automatically release a reasonable amount of bile, even if you just have a small amount of lean animal protein. There are also a lot of compounds and nutrients that are required for detox stimulation and also that the toxins can bind to. So yeah, you could go all the way with just like bile detox and following a balanced diet, but um, depending on how severe the liver damage is, you might not feel good until you fix certain nutrient deficiencies, which can be difficult because as we've said earlier, you know, the liver is also under stress simply by absorbing nutrients. So we definitely don't want to overdo any. And the most important thing I'm going to say all day might be that the liver can only release so many toxins per meal. Imagine the amount of nutrients that you absorb eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner over several years. And for each of those meals, for several hours, the liver was absorbing those nutrients. So we're talking, you know, potentially over a thousand hours per year of the liver absorbing nutrients. You think the liver can just dump all of that out at once in the bile? No. Okay, maybe the liver can dump a day's worth of bile in a few hours maximum, you know? Whatever length of time it took you to accumulate those toxins, it's safe to say it might take that amount of time to release them. You know, it's not like you can just do some crazy liver cleanse, like there's a really popular one, I think it's called the Andreas Moritz liver cleanse. It's, it's ridiculous. The idea that you can just detox your liver over the course of several days, all of those nutrients and toxins and compounds are deeply ingrained into the liver tissue. And the liver was trying to protect the body by keeping them there. So in order for it to like go in there and take them out and have all the cells and molecules move that stuff, it's not a fast or quick or easy process. You have to keep that in mind. This is a moderate thing you're doing over several years. And if you do everything correctly, you'll feel good along the way. So let's say you're deficient in B vitamins from the stress of the detox on the liver. And some toxins can also bind to B vitamins. You know, B1, for instance, they're directly binding to the nutrient. Same thing with certain amino acids. I remember people talking about uh, taurine for liver detox. There's also sugar, especially glucose. Glucose is very important. The liver will actually bind toxins directly to glucose for them to be excreted in the bowel movement, and they can also be uh, excreted to a lesser extent in the urinary uh, tract. And it becomes obvious that this is more of a balance of foods and nutrients to optimize detox. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could just suck down fiber smoothies every morning and those might help and accelerate things. But if you become you know, deficient in vitamin C because there's too much sugar in it 
or magnesium because you're then taking the vitamin C, you really need to be aware of the balance because as soon as you try to do something extreme to make things go faster, then you might deplete other nutrients or cause other issues or excess stress on the body. I'll say it again, as long as you feel good and you know you're detoxing and you're following a strict diet, um, you know, the best thing you can probably do to accelerate it is not dietary or supplement related. It's going out, being in the sun a lot, getting a lot of physical activity, grounding, moving around, being really active is gonna benefit you way more than trying to accelerate liver detox. I mean, there's so much that goes into this, but we'll touch on the keto carnivore stuff a bit more. Protein and fat are stressful on digestion because they require enzymes to be broken down, whereas carbohydrates, some cases do need enzymes, but the gut bacteria can break down and digest carbohydrates. Starches, sugars, all that stuff are so much less stress on your liver in the context of a healthy gut microbiome with the proper bacteria. And that's where most people just give up because they're keto carnivore, their microbiome's messed up, they try to eat carbs, they try to eat sugar, they get instant candida fungal overgrowths and they feel horrible. It's the simple balance of having the right amount of carbohydrates, fiber and correct probiotics and it's as simple as that. As soon as I figured out water kefir and water kefir grains and had a properly made probiotic, that was when everything clicked and I was able to follow a balanced diet. A lot of you guys are still following those diets, carnivore, raw primal, keto, whatever diet, and don't want to eat carbs because of you feeling bad or, or that reaction to them. And that balance of things to correct your gut bacteria is the most significant diet lifestyle factor you're missing in preventing you from following a normal diet of high quality organic foods. If you think you can do these extreme diets for the rest of your life, whether it's months or years from now, you will have extreme health issues to the point where it's going to be much harder to recover your health. And then at that point, most people will throw their fate in the hands of a medical doctor who has no clue about liver health being the core of our physical health, <laughs> uh, let alone how to fix it. So if you guys think it's bad that uh, you get a little rosacea or a tiny reaction or you don't feel so good when you eat carbs, wait until you don't sleep for six months straight. <laughs> That's, there's some very extreme ends of things that most people are fortunate enough not to have experienced, but I'm just here to help most people prevent themselves from getting to that point or uh, in those unfortunate circumstances to uh, help people get back to reasonable health. Well, thank you guys for joining me. And I probably should have put this at the beginning, but uh, just to make it more relatable, 99% of people have some degree of liver damage, even if it's not manifesting itself in a noticeable way in their current life. So you will greatly benefit from following my type of diet for at least two years, three years, and that'll really get you in a position where your liver will be a lot healthier and you don't have to worry about certain things. Uh, but you guys can go to frank com if you would like to support me through all of my businesses and be sure to just scroll through my YouTube channel, see if there's any other nutritional or educational videos that can kind of help you piece some things together. But as always, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell and I will see you guys soon.